Welcome back, baby. We are back. Lady J Meat Dudes podcast, man. We've been gone, huh? What's up? What's up? I'm Evan. My name's Tyler. And man, so much has changed since the last episode of season one. We stopped doing it because we actually opened up a bakery coffee shop about 10 miles away down in South Park. Got a little busy. Got a little crazy there. Uh, So that's why you don't see uh, Chef Charlie. He's down there crushing some pastries right now. But we thought we needed to bring this back, talk a lot about meat. Hopefully you guys missed us. And uh, you've know, been getting the question a lot. A lot of people have been saying, hey, if I buy a half a cow, you know, what does that really, what does that really entail? And Which s- sounds like a large endeavor. Yeah. How many pounds? What about 350, 400 pounds? No, 450. 450. Yeah. Yeah. Of, so of, of actual meat. Yeah. I just committed to a half yeah. the other day. So it's coming in a couple weeks. So a lot of people, <clears throat> that's a lot of meat, you know, for your average uh, American, mm. right? As it turns out. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we thought we could talk about splitting it up because a lot of people ask, like, hey, should I, can I get a quarter and can I get a half? And you can't really get a quarter because you can't really split up. You can't just take the best parts and then leave the, the butcher with the rest of the parts. So right. the best thing to do is get a half, split it with your friends. And so we thought we'd kind of do a fantasy football draft style of picking the sections, picking our favorite sections and talking about how we'd utilize the whole animal and what section we'd, we'd pick and, and go for first. So we'll leave it at that, right? I mean, we should just pop into it, man. We flipped the coin. Yep. And I get first pick. Tyler gets first, first picks. pick in the draft. So it's going to go Tyler, then it's going to go me, and then I'm going to start off the second round. It's going to go just me like a, and then Tyler. It's like a snake just draft like that if snake. you're familiar with the right? fantasy football dork world. Yeah, just like that game we used to play in middle school, high school on our phones, on the Nokias, <coughs> a snake. You had a razor flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. No way. All right, let's get into it. So we just bought a half beef. Just came in. You're about to butcher it up. You get first pick. What is Chef Tyler picking first? I'm going rib primal. Going, going rib section. Come on. Of course. The, the, the number one pick. Right? The quarterback right there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so because I'm a ribeye dude. Yep. That is my all-time favorite, although people make fun of me because of the tenderloins and the whatevers. But if I had to pick a steak, it was going to be a ribeye. So, so what comes into that primal? Why'd you pick it? <clears throat> well, because you get the – you can yank the dino ribs out of there. You can get tomahawk yep. steaks out of there. Of course, all the ribeye steaks out of there. Um, you got flanking ribs out of there. Oh, yeah. Your Korean barbecue um, kind of rolling down into the short rib area. Okay. Um, but for those of us who are the steak and want a steak, yeah, you're going to get a ribeye. And how many of those are you going to get? There is seven, depending on where you get your meat cut, it's seven or eight bone okay. center rib primal. Ooh, yeah. Right? So ours are from preservation and pure country are seven bones. Okay. So in those seven bones, you know, they, the shapes move, kind of like dissipate as the bone goes through the body. So you only get really three or four true tomahawk steaks yeah out of okay. there for the the drama bone you know that's everybody's yeah bring to the barbecue and yeah. swinging it around like they're that's what we like man they should they show up to the party <laughs> like, yeah. so, okay <coughs> so three three tomahawks out of that okay. yeah that's about it uh-huh. that's cool. and then you're probably cutting the rest off the bone maybe yeah probably yeah. and i would cut so when you cut the tomahawks around you know you cut right down the center of the bone mm-hmm. um and those are about three and a half pounds a piece okay so then when you take the bones off the other end more towards the sirloin or the uh new york side of the ribeye then you start to portion those steaks out and i usually portion those out into a pound okay about 16 ounces okay so then you get i get three or four really nice bone in ribeyes and then i take the bones off when those are technically back ribs yep i try to put in the case all the time but nobody nobody knows how the gems. You got to call them pork or uh, mm. beef baby backs. Right? That's what beef we should call them. Beef that's baby backs. <laughs> that, that, that might do it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, and then, you know, you got all the fatty ends on those bones where you're going to cut those into dino ribs, the one, two, three, A, or flankins, if you're yeah. familiar. It's cut and crossed the other way. So there's the three or four little bones oh, in the flankins. fatty, fatty, Ugh. short, ribby looking meat. Yeah. It's fucking delicious. So good. They're bonkers good. 
So that rib primal, man, you're getting a, you're getting a ton of good juicy steaks out of that rib primal. That's obviously why it's the number one pick. It's probably going to be the number one pick for most people. Um, so good good job it's on fun, that. Man. It's fun to break good down. selections. Yeah, 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 of yeah. course. You know, <clears throat> so I get picks two and three. So you this, know, this this will be interesting, right? So I'm picking I'm picking the Chuck, and I'm and I would never have done that. Probably before I met you guys, because first of all, I didn't know what was in the chuck. I'm glad you said that. I was going to say that how how far you've come as a meat connoisseur Absolutely. since we started this an elite ad- meat adventure. <laughs> as an elite meat adventure, <laughs> you know. So the <clears throat> chuck, you know, comes right from that shoulder. It's before the ribeye, and so I let you know. First of all, we could take that whole chuck roll, and uh, I would probably have you. Take the Zabuton off, of course. Cut into those Zabuton steaks because those are the best things that we Her sell. Everybody's favorite. Kitchen. That's that's just the best. Of course, the Delmonicos, the mini ribeyes, because then it, it starts with the Delmonico here, and then it goes into the ribeye. So mm-hmm. it's right before the ribeye starts. So I'm taking those Delmonicos. You only really get three, Two, three. maybe four, okay. twelve ounce steaks out of there. Yeah, to be oh, they're so good though. Oh yeah, they're delicious. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. Uh, so what else? We got the chuck eye. So I'll probably give that to my wife and she would roast it because she likes to roast meat. Roast. You, you know. could stew it. Keep oh, yeah. It. That's great stew meat. A lot of people ask for stew, stew meat, meat, man. I don't. Yeah, we got we to gotta do that. Um, the flat iron. I just took home some Wagyu flat iron. Flatrion. Fla- the flatrion. So I get that out of the shoulder, the chuck. Uh, Second most tender cut on the animal. Oh, man. And I'm just grilling that. Straight up. I'm just grilling that. And, yeah. and like like we talk about, my wife actually likes that steak because I grill it to about medium well for her. Yes. And it's still tender. And that's Little awesome. known fact of the uh, Flatrion, not only is it the second most tender cut, but it's also that cut that you have people in your family that want a mid-well steak or a well-done steak. It's perfect. God fucking forbid. It's but perfect. it's still going to stay tender. Yeah. And you don't demolish the shit out of it. It's yeah. still good. It's I juicy. Love it. It's, oh, it's yeah. so flavorful. Oh, so good. We got the Terrace Major. So that's the also the, the Petite <clears throat> Filet. Mm-hmm. I cooked some of those up uh, a few months ago just on the grill and just, you so know, yummy. with the bovine or salt pepper. God, they're so meaty. Um, you, they are minerally. You, you kind of talked about that. How I you call get it that, the uh, that beefy minerally. It's like when you were a little kid and you fell off your handlebar, your bike and bumped your lip. <laughs> <laughs> you just get that little yeah. teeny tinge of blood yeah that's how i consider the terrace flavor man it's, it's so good that's good and you know sarah has a, a spirit that she pours that has that little blood oh yeah flavor. yeah it's freaking crazy man Sick. we gotta bring her back on this thing is that why she has vampire teeth? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh you know i put the ranch steaks in the chuck as well mm, yep that's uh, charlie's favorite <clears throat> i would you know i don't eat the ranch steaks unless they're wagyu call wagyu, me an baby. elitist but you know it's they're, they're your everyday. See, they'd be great to just kind of grill up and maybe put on a salad or something like that. You could do that. But the, the Wagyu ranch steaks, like, look oh, crazy, man. Bananas. So so that pretty much wraps up the chuck. You got the chuck short ribs I could do something with. I could, you know, could. braise nice that. Little English style cut. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Those chuck short ribs. My wife loves those, too. So for my pick now, first pick of the second round, I'm going with the loin. I'm going with that short loin. So right behind the ribeye. Down the cow, where you get your New Yorks, yep. you get your porterhouse, your T-bones. The tenderloin is in there as well. So I might think about cutting the porterhouse. Yeah. You know, and, and you say you're a ribeye guy. I think I was a ribeye guy, but I think I've been kind of slowly moving to the New York. Because it's meatier. It's meatier. It's a little bit more toothsome. I think so. It's, sometimes, I hate to say it, I think the ribeye can be almost like too thick and fatty, you know? Mm. Like, oh, I hate, oh mm. kill me, roast me, right? But, like, I just love just a nice, like, you know, three-quarter inch thick New York. It's delicious. It's perfect, it's man. Delicious. With, with the fat cap, too. Oh, I've got to have the fat cap. I yep, love yep, the fat yep. cap. Um, but if I'm going to cut that porterhouse, what do I need? Uh, the tenderloin in the – so the porterhouse is the New York and the tenderloin. Yeah, and technically there's only what? Four, I think. I think the tenderloin has to be one and a half inch minimum. Two five. One point two five minimum yeah. per to cut. So yeah. as that tenderloin kind of dissipates in its muscle size, yep. that's when you lose it. So you got that. It's almost like the center, like center cut New York and tenderloin. Yeah. So <clears> so you're taking that bone and you're just yeah. going right. You're yeah. just going right, right. Yeah. Not through it, but you're you're going right down next to it. 
and you've got your New York on one side and your, your little tenderloin mm -hmm. on the other. Oh, yeah. Beauties. That sounds good. How do you cook that? You know, like, it's, it's going to be hard, You right? know, a lot of people, like, if you go steak Florentina in, in Italy, you always put the bone down on the grill first. Uh -huh. So with the theory is that you're heating the bone because those of us that cook bone-on steaks, you know that the outside of the muscle is going to cook faster than where the bone is because the bone yeah. is that dense you know it's coming out of the fridge so it's cold yeah. yep true that, right? that so you have to heat that bone technically as as unless you want some rare bits yeah. next to your mid rare bits so or whatever so you just go and so here's your your yeah. new york and your, and your you tenderloin just set it on the grill with, the, really? with them sticking up like that really and you heat the bone and it kind of starts to, to warm everything sort of That's together cool. okay and then you can Flip and it you kind of hit it. Yeah, get after it. Get it to that. Because really, I mean, you want to cook your tenderloin to 120, maybe 125. Yeah. In your New York, I'm going 125 to 130 on my New York, yeah. probably. So yeah. you gotta you gotta be crafty with it. Yeah. You know, probably fool around with uh, your grill and you know your hot spots and yeah. moving it around and all that kind of good. But okay, okay. The coolest thing for me about for presentation wise <laughs> is that when you do present present it, you can slice everything off. Lay the bone and then slice the steak and it put it right put next it right to back. where it used to live. Yeah. I love that. That's so cool. Oh yeah, that sounds good. Cool. Yep. Yep. So I don't know. I'd probably do I'd probably do the porterhouse and the T bones. But T bone is just a is just a porterhouse that has <clears throat> less, less of a of a of a of filet on there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I I probably would do that just because I want to cook them both together. I like that. I probably wouldn't pull out I wouldn't have you pull out the, the tenderloin by itself. But yeah, the loin would be would definitely be my second pick. You know, moving down the animal, you're still getting some really nice tender cuts in there. You still could actually pull a little bit of that chunk of the tenderloin out if you wanted to. If you wanted just to take like the one porter houses, okay, and then you could take that rest of the tenderloin out and then cut the New York. New York's okay. So you'd have like a nice little, you know, probably pound and a half -y. Ooh, roasty. Little roasty filet. Or you could dice it up and make Evan's all-time favorite steak bites. Steak bites. Steak man. bites. Dude, nothing better, dude. Nothing steak better. Bites. <laughs> 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 All right, man. So that's my pick. So your oh, second pick of the second round. What you got going on here, man? <clears throat> sirloin. So where, where's that? We got the ribeye, the short loin, and then you got the sirloin right. behind it, right? All continual muscle, right? From the chuck eye to the rib eye to the New Yorker, the strip, and then to the sirloin. Nice. Which includes um, my kind of new favorite is top sirloin. I know, man. Dude, it's fucking good. It's good, like, dude. Hey, shout out, shout out, truthfully, to Chef Charlie, man. He, he, he brought that in and was yep, like, this is yep. the shit. And Chuckles was like, Chuck, oh, oh, man. top sirloin. That's good. Um, That's good. We cooked it last night for one of the sandwich specials and like, <laughs> I just cube it out and <laughs> kind of so like, good. into almost like eye of round size, so like yep. two and a half, three pounders, because the muscle itself is only around like seven. Seven, 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 seven to nine. Pounds? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, and so there's a couple different pieces of sinew that run through it. Yep. And I peel out some of that meat and put it into the grind for burgers or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but, dude. Yeah. Like, I, I Mid-rare and just slice nice and thin, like oh. not even crazy thin, just like quarter-inch slices. Yeah. Fucking melt in your mouth. Just with the house bovine rub? Shit's good. Dude. dude, it was so good. I took a, I was like, damn. Yeah. I was like, what? Am I tasting right now? Like I, delicious. It almost like you said, rivaled like a smoked tenderloin. It really does. It dude. was so good. Yeah, maybe put the black rub on it next time. See, oh, it. that'd be cool. And talk about Get like bang for your side. buck too, oh, right? Dude, like yeah. if you find like a great wagyu, exactly. top sirloin I mean, instead of a tenderloin. Uh, preservation had to move some some uh, wagyu. They yeah. were like, I got these, and I'll give you a deal on. I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for them, but if you go to the store and get yourself a top sirloin steak, you know you're going to pay. You know, ten bucks a pound, twelve bucks a pound for yeah, it, whatever. Probably. And you go to get a ribeye at the store. You're gonna pay thirty-five, forty, depending on where you get your ribeye. Yeah. Sometimes forty-five bucks a pound for yeah. a ribeye. What do we like do here? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty-two for ribeye all day. Um, <clears throat> top sirloin, love it. Bottom sirloin. Yep. Not not as much, but you start to get a little bit more of that working muscle in there, so it's uh -huh. a little bit chewier. But okay, stewed and diced and it's pretty lean, so if you have a fattier cut and a leaner cut to, to marry together and say like a burger grind or something, oh, yeah, that's where you know your chuck eye that you chose was you know generally 
80, 20, 70, 30 all day through, for that whole muscle. For that whole That's muscle. why okay. the chuck is always the most perfect muscle to grind for burgers because okay. that's kind of what you're looking that's for. That's what right? you're looking for, yeah. 80, 20. So everybody's favorite in Brazil is the picanha. Yes, yes. And we call it, the, the French call it the culotte. Man. We call it a top sirloin. No, sirloin cap. Sirloin cap, yeah. Sirloin cap. Top of the, it sits on top of that top sirloin, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so it's got this beauty. It's like a this beautiful little, like, almost triangular, diamond-shaped, small muscle, depending on the size of the cow. Uh-huh. Um, and y- if you think about that big New York fat cap on, on yeah. the end, that kind of continues into that muscle. Yeah. So, you know, in Brazil, the asadero, those huge, crazy hot brick ovens, and they skewer it. So you get this... Meaty, fatty. It's almost like a looks like a meat donut. Yeah, like right? the, it's like all circular. Yeah, and then you skewer Ooh, it. And yeah, then put that sucker in there. Super dope. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. delicious. There is a really thin line of sinew underneath that cap, though. Yeah. Okay. So when you're cutting steaks out of it, when I'm eating it at home, I render out that cap a little bit, and yeah. then I slice slice little nibbits of the fat and the meat into yeah. just little strips. So you have yeah. a little bite of yeah. fat so you with your little, meat. Yep, yeah, exactly. Dude, I, almost pe- I almost take it apart and eat one way. bite of fat and uh. one bite of meat. <laughs> Mark Fuller <laughs> saw me one day, he was like eating, a, I came in on my day off when hey. I was cooking at Spring Hill and I ordered a ribeye and I immediately peeled the fat off the ribeye and dude. diced it into little pieces and he came over and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? That's how we do it. And man. I was like, watch. <laughs> and then I diced my, my ribeye and meat. And it's I was like, like little butter bites. Doink, 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 doink. And by the end of it, that's perfect. perfect. Oh, man. Bite of fat, bite of meat, baby. That's, oh, that's awesome. Culotte's dope. Everybody loves culotte. Sirloin cap. It's really also that kind of more rich, minerally meaty flavor. But you get that. A little bit like a, a New York, fat, right? Because yeah. it's yeah. right behind it. Yeah. What about the, the tri-tip and the bob that? Is that is that part of that sirloin, technically? <clears throat> I mean, I guess so, tri-tip, yeah. And, uh, you know, tri-tips are so versatile, so delicious. That mm-hmm. muscle's great. Uh, one thing about the tri-tip that a lot of people don't know is that there's two different grains, and yeah. we try to train everybody that so. come in to buy it or even the cooks that work here when we're doing tri-tip. It takes them a while to know that muscle is a roadmap, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You cut with the grain, that fucker's chewy. It's eh. chewy. Not good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. yeah. And you can either, you know, depending on your butcher, you get a fat cap on that or a fat cap off. Yeah, okay. And the a lot fat, of the Wagyu ones do, we get All the Wagyu on one that, has fat right? cap on because yeah. that, that fat's going to melt at, you know, start to melt at 70 whatever degrees. Right? Yeah. So that's where you get that luscious, buttery, fatty mouthfeel where you're kind of oh, taking yeah. on more of that thicker New York fat when it's not a Wagyu animal. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of... Depends on how you like it, but tri tips are dope. That's good. Um, I would say bobette, yeah, but I kind of consider bobette into that abdominal region. Kind of flank him, abdominal. I give him the flanker, the the bobette, the flap meat, as it were. Okay, okay, that might have to be. <coughs> might, might change my decision down the road here. Oh, of what I'm picking. Okay. So okay, abdominals. <laughs> so what do you got next? So that was your your pick. Now you're, we're going back to you because we're doing snake baby. So you got it. Yep, I'm up. Um, and I'm just going to yank the brisket out. Yeah. Because, I mean, would. that's that's a big chunker right there. That's, you know, I think the biggest brisket I've ever seen is like a 25, 27-pounder. I think we've done one, right, when we did the the, the, the raffle. Dude. Yeah, yeah, that was a big one. Dude, I'm glad you picked this because I don't have a device to right? smoke that so, with. So, <laughs> I mean, of course, everybody wants a Texas-style brisket. Yeah, yeah. Heavy black pepper, two-to-one black pepper to salt. Um there's different meshes. People get all nerdy about that shit. 14 yeah. mesh cracked pepper. Yeah, um, right. If you use fresh telecherry or peppercorns, which I slowly learned, but <laughs> it's too strong. Yeah. It's so peppery. So when you're using, you know, all the chefy nerds out there, they're like, oh, you don't use fresh peppercorns. Like, nah, dude. Because <laughs> the volatile oils that come out of those peppercorns oh. when heated, just woo. Just overdoes it. Spicy. Okay. Although I do, getting ready to rub 100 freaking uh, pastramis today, right yeah, after this, yeah. I do use fresh black pepper Cause that's in a, that. Because it's, right? it's, it's two to one toasted coriander seed to yeah. black pepper. So it's not that two pepper, one salt ratio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. it's a little bit more mild. <coughs> but yeah, you use uh, oh, uh, cracked 14 
gauge, I believe they call it. Um, what do you? How so you, how you cooking it? I'm just gonna smoke it. I'll trim it up. Yeah. Um, we're gonna smoke it for probably depending. So, general rule of thumb for brisket: when you have your proper temperature to 25, 250, whatever your smoker's doing. Um, general rule of thumb: sometimes you hit or miss, but it's an hour of cook time per pound. Yeah. So, I'm gonna trim say four pounds of meat off that 27 pound brisket. <laughs> you're cooking it for a whole day? So you're cooking that sucker Dude. for 24 hours. And, but that, that rule, I feel like, also throws people off when you hit, like, the stall. The stall is killer, they, dude. It, 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 just it people kills like, It's everybody. been on for 11 hours, you know? <clears throat> I actually, one of our customers that comes in, Steve, retired executive chef Steve, still yeah. loves to cook. He's a wild man. And he always comes in, oh, chef, get a brisket. Oh, 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 I need a brisket. Yeah. And he said he was so embarrassed because the last time he came in, I was like, how'd that brisket turn out, dude? He's just like, fucking stall killed yeah. me man everybody was waiting and waiting they uh, just hung at 180 it uh, hung at 180 it hung at 180 because technically you want to take your you know your briskets to 203 ish yeah. i mean 208 is going to just fall apart but it's that Jeez. magic you got to keep an eye on it so once you get that 180 grab a couple more beers and sit just down next to your smoker and do not <laughs> leave it you know, it helps to get a probe and all those kind of things so to, what, to, to work that out. But What would you ask? Um, what would you tell someone that, like, let's <clears> say <throat> you, you're like, okay, I'm planning my barbecue dinner at uh-huh. 6 p.m., um, you know, what would you tell somebody to, to do to make sure you're not just like, okay, it's supposed to cook for 11 hours, so I need to start it at, you know, 7 a.m., <clears> and it's going to be done. Like, what would you tell somebody, so like, resting? Basically, and- this is where experience comes in. Yep. Right. Because... You don't, sh- you know, showing up late to an interview, don't do it. Yeah. Might as well not show up. Yep. Showing up for a dinner party and the meat's not done, you might, as, you might as well make some grilled cheese sandwiches, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's so, embarrassing. You know, really, when I tell people about resting meat, yes, it doesn't translate all the way through every cut, right? Okay. So... Resting your meat half as long as it took to cook. <laughs> you're not going to rest your meat for 12 hours when you're with a brisket. Yeah. Although when we do um, beef ribs yeah, and also brisket, you know, you're going to pull it out when it hits that money temperature. And that sucker's going to stay hot for hours. Yeah. As long as you take it inside, leave it on the counter. You know, it's not in a cold area. Yeah. I think it's going to, it will technically probably carry over to cook a little bit also. But you're going to slow down all those juices, and honestly, I'm going to let my brisket rest for like three or four hours. And that's so if you bet, time right? that yeah. around when your your guests are showing up, cocktail hour, past apps, you know, I don't know yeah. how to do it at your house, but Definitely. I move his bouche all day. <laughs> totally. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you get it done before. Yeah. And like, so don't go at don't least two hours that, to rest, Don't right? go for that money, like, I'm going to pull it out, we're going to slice it right when you show up. Uh-uh. No. No. Not gonna nine, be done. Nine point five out of ten, you do not hit it. Yeah, you never know. There's so many variables: temperature yeah. outside, how thick your smoker is, how big the steel is, how hot the fire's running, how wet your wood is. Blah 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 blah. There's so many variables, so you always want to give yourself a cushion. Yes, you want to look like the superstar. All right, so get it done mm. two to three hours before. Let it rest. <laughs> I'd also braise it. You know, yeah, you that's the classic super super pot rusty. Classic kind of red wine, mirepoix, tomato product kind of. That's an all, all yeah. classic. Brisket. You guys do that real well, man. We do that one. All right, all right. I'm up now. I'm up now. You took out that brisket. I was happy because that wasn't on my draft board because I don't have enough. Uh, I don't have a big enough uh, thing at home to to smoke that device. Size, size queen. <laughs> so I'm going. I'm gonna think I'm gonna go with the short plate kind of down in those kind of abdominals mm-hmm. because I like, you know, so that's going to sit kind of under the rib section. Um, and I'm going to go for those skirt steaks, the beef Toro, which you, which our guys at Preservation do real well. Um, also going to get some short ribs out of that, have a little bit of short ribs out of that. Um, but mostly I'm doing it because I like the abdominals. So skirt steaks to me, man, I think I, I talk about it almost every single time, but like it's Money. just – 
It just so delicious. So money. Man, we got these. We got this couple with their kids that comes in every single Sunday. Just buys us out a skirt steak, man. Every time I'm like, "What's up?" They get some pastries and they're like, "Pull out the skirts, let's go." Because like, oh, that's good to know. Oh, dude, it's just <clears throat> like one of the, like the most versatile cuts. Easy to cook. It's great grilled, uh, which I just love to do. Just love to roll it right out and just grill that sucker. It's also one of those those ones that you can get away with cooking it to a midwell and still oh, be happy it's with totally it. Totally fine. Right? Yeah. Only thing I, I like doing, I, I like cutting, you know, really, you know, taking off some of that fat, cleaning it, you know, because there are some big, chunky fats there on there that, like, you got to take off. There's some good ones in there. Yeah. Just, not, I don't, not I all leave that it. fat on there is, is I leave it, sinewy. Know. Yeah. It's melty. Yeah. It's delicious. But there is some chunks on there that are pretty, some, pretty some thick. There's some hard chunks. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I get those, got to get this out of there. And then the Toro. The Toro, uh, a lot of people aren't familiar with. It's, it's like a, I always describe it as like a, a flank steak that's a little bit thinner and more marbled. So right from that, right from that belly. Center of the navel. Center of the navel. Got to cut through a lot of crap to get to it. But I definitely think it's worth it. <clears throat> it's dope. Uh, and, and I love, I mean, I love flank steaks, but in, in Toro just almost looks like a Wagyu flank steak. It sure does. <laughs> you know? and, and and it's, but it's thin, too. It's so I, versatile. I like too. You've got so many different avenues of, of cook there. Yeah. So with you that short. even, like, s- s- roll it up. Stuff it and roll it up and do, like, a long uh, roast on yeah. it. It'd be kind of fun. So yeah, so I, I'm I'm going for those abdominals. I'm trying to take those out right mm. now, and uh, yeah, skirt and toro for sure. Short I'll see ribs, if you'll, no brainer. I'll see if you leave me some short ribs because I know you're taking the rib section and you're butchering it. So if, hopefully you leave me some short ribs down you can there. Have one flanking. <laughs> <laughs> Give me, hey dude, I'll take it. Man. I'd just be grilling two ounces toro <laughs> skirt flanking, dude. I'd be oh, just grilling be, the hell out of that. That'd be a money. Oh, that'd be that'd great be barbecue, a money grill man. right there. Yeah, and then for <clears> that, you know, I don't gotta, I don't gotta wait, you know, so long to rest that, right? I rest that for about ten minutes. Yep, and it's and it's ready to roll, yep. man. So that's an easy one. All right, my next, I'm sticking, I'm sticking low, I'm sticking the, uh, in the abdominals there, and we kind of, since uh, the flank is kind of a smaller section, um, I'm, I kind of, I'm gonna jump in and say I'm gonna take the flank and the shanks. Because we got we got a couple of shanks on there, and so. they're pretty. They're technically kind of connected. Kind of connected. Little, that little nook. Yeah. So I'm going flank and shanks, um, flank steak because I just love grilling. My dad still cooked the best flank steak I've ever had. Like growing up, that was like his thing. It was <laughs> like flank steak, baby. You know, you probably get it from QFC, but like, damn, it was like so good every single time. He cooked it perfectly. I still what, like. What kind of what kind of style were you going, we're going? Tacos, Yoshida's, or? oh yeah, <laughs> teriyaki baby. That's where I get my Yoshida's love, guy. Oh, man. Oh, you know, dude. Before, right? I know. Yeah. That's so cool, man. Yeah. Tell him that my dad kept him in business for years, man. <laughs> Costco, Costco Yoshida's, <laughs> <laughs> probably gallon but, jug. Oh man, but now you know I've I've matured a little mm. bit, and I'd probably grab some bulgogi from here uh, instead of the Yoshida's. Or I'd make my own bulgogi, which I did once because we were out of it, and so I, I ground up some some or, uh, some apples, some green apples mm-hmm. in there too. Toasted the the sesame seeds. Trying to give away the secrets. I know, I know, man. Should I not? We'll we'll, we'll black that out. Some worry. people use. Most of the time, I think they use Japanese pear. Yeah, yeah. This is a Charlie recipe, so he put the green apple in there for a little more uh, piquant. No, oh, that's pretty cool. More well, I like that, man. Little tang to it. All right, all right. So I'm doing that. I'm grilling, man. I've just been grilling the last the last two rounds here. I love it. <coughs> um, but then also the shanks, you know, I might do a little osabuco with those with those shanks. Oh yeah. We've done some birria before. Mm, um, yeah. I'd probably try to ask you guys how to do that and try to make that because when you cook the osabuco so perfectly, it is just fall apart meat. And that's what my wife loves, fall apart meat. I wouldn't tell her it's from the shank because she'd probably be freaked out she'd by freak it. She'd freak out by the got bone. got that big bone in there. She'd be like, what? But I'd pull it apart, I'd hide the bone, and I'd be like, check out this pull apart meat. And she would love it. Because it is, it's so tender, but you got to cook that slow and low. And why the osabuco is so fucking money, because it's that working muscle, it has a crazy intense uh, protein structure. Yeah. But it's the marrow. The marrow. The marrow in the middle of that bone. It's the money marrow spot. Yes. So that that marrow melts down out of the bone into your into the meat. braise. Yep. And it makes it just silk. And so the, you get luscious. So that also you take the you take the shank right, and they yep. just zoop 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 just uh-huh. just bandsaw it right down. Uh huh. Yeah. Because yeah, you're two not inch, two inch cut. <laughs> <laughs> I did. If I could do it. Yeah. That, that's be a cool. workout. Yeah. That's not that'd, cool. That'd be the day. Sore right. muscles. All right, so 
I'm taking the flank and the shank. There's only technically one section left out of that half beef. So I'm leaving that to Tyler, and he'll talk about it here. What you got? That's my kicker. I'm drafting my kicker right now. <laughs> you have to. What's left? <laughs> What's left? Got a couple bench players. Uh, There's some good stuff on there. There's some good stuff. Let's talk about uh, Eye of Round. Mm-hmm. Right? So where's that at? It's You kind of got to peel apart a bunch of different muscles in that round to yeah. get to the Eye of Round, and it's technically, geez, probably – Two, two, three percent of that muscle, that whole round. Yeah, it's just a little guy. It's probably three, three pounder. But we're talking about the whole back end, right? The yep. whole round, the rump. Mm-hmm. So it goes, it goes, chuck, rib, short loin, sirloin, round, round. And that's yeah. where and you're in the back of the cow. So it's a little bit. So we got a lot. Tougher, we got right? a lot of brazies here. Yep. We got a lot of roasties. Yep. Um, you also trim some of that up and lean leaner meat into the grind of your burger or whatever you're doing there. Yep. Um, the eye of round is super super rad because you know back in the Italian days we used to make that into uh, carpaccio. Ooh, okay. Right? Okay. So you just pop that sucker. So for me, I would I would kind of do like a really nice rub on it here in the LJ style. Yep. Smoke it rare. Yeah. Pull it at one twins. Yeah. One twins. Chill it. <laughs> and then slice it super thin so you could have like a smoked carpaggio. Oh, that's cool. Or you could turn it into a killer roast beef sandwich. That's the thing. That's what I want right. to hear. That's roast what I want sandwich. to hear. Yeah. Roast um, beef. And right now I'm sourcing out a Wagyu product of uh, I round to come up with like the dopest yeah. roast beef ever. <laughs> we need that. It's going to be butter. We need that, it's dude. It's going to be butter. We need that. Um, <laughs> top round, bottom round, you know, there's there's roasties. That's all you kind of really get in those sections. There's no steaks out of that. You're yeah. chewy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Why, so, are they, why are they chewy, though? Because that's, that's the – think about all the working muscles and think about how big the rump is on a yeah. cow. Yeah. You look at a cow, like, of course, their bellies are really big and, you know, their head's really big, but their rear legs are huge. Yeah. Because that's – they're – Moving that those are some working ass muscles. Totally, so you right. get your your osabucos out of those rear shanks and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and then also kind of throw that oxtail into that mix. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. So I know. you got we're lucky. talking about working muscles. Those of us who are Braze fans, the oxtail is where it's at. Yeah. Back in the day, I'm not gonna date myself here. I don't want <laughs> everybody that I ask thinks in the nineteen like hundreds thinks I'm twenty seven. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> back in the day when I started cooking, oxtail was garbage. Yeah, yeah, right. Dude, it was like 80 cents a pound. <laughs> right? <laughs> but now... <laughs> but now it's like, yeah, we'll get you an oxtail. thirteen fifty a pound. Like, what? 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 The and hell? There's, so there's one, t- one tail. But if you think about that tail, yep. it's whipping all the time. It's moving all the time. It's yeah. swatting flies and doing all that shit. So um, between the vertebrae of that tail are all these sweet chunks of meat that just get crazy rigid and rich in moving protein structure okay so then when you braise those down it's straight up almost like a bouncy ball yeah when you <laughs> chill it, it yeah. really yeah you braise That's crazy. it crazy you take and probably cut it into like you know one inch cuts or whatever sear it do the whole thing like an osabuco yeah S- you can just straight up braise it in red wine straight up braise it in in water mirepoix it doesn't really matter cuz mm-hmm. that protein structure is going to be so rich yeah that when it's done cooking and you always cool your braises in the liquid, always, mm-hmm. or they're dry. When you cool that and pull the oxtail out, it's going bang. <laughs> Dude, it's like <laughs> you can cut chunks. That's so, crazy. Yeah, we, uh, we used to do this, uh, pick the meat, reduce the jus a little bit, and fold and pour the, the jus back over the meat. We pack it into a terrine mold okay, and then slice it. Almost like head cheese. So you have with the oxtail in there? All the meat in there oh, okay. and the braise. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, unctuous, just unctuous, <laughs> sticky mouthfeel. So we would slice it, batter it, and fry it. Yeah, and have like yeah. this fried oxtail terrine with like this orange marmalade, arugula kind of salad deal. Ooh, okay. It was fucking good. It's pretty fancy, man. Well, you know, for I'm, 80 cents a pound. I'm a fancy back in the day. I'm a fancy guy. <laughs> <laughs> man. Yeah, oxtail, you know, that's, a, that's one of the, it's a gem, but. <clears throat> good luck. Yeah. Good luck getting good it. Good luck. Yeah. People, good luck getting it. Somebody found out. The fancy restaurants want it now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. garbage day. Nope. 
Mountain Mist. <clears throat> that kind of sums up yeah, the half of the picks for the half. So what hap- So like if if they're selling the half, you know, to you know half to two people over here and the other half to two people over there, what happens to the head? It doesn't get like sp- nope. split down, right? No. So what happens to the head? The head gets lopped off. Mm-hmm. And the cheeks are taken out, and of beef course. cheeks are super dope. They're oh, big. Gosh. They're huge. We love and we, them. we already talked about the working muscles. That's the workingest muscle. Yes. Other than the tongue, which is the strongest oh, muscle yeah. in the body. So you got tongue and cheeks. Okay. Tongue and cheek. That's it. Yeah. You can't eat the brains. People don't eat the brains. Some people eat the brains. I've, I've read a lot of this and that. Yeah. Um, yes or no. And like, I mean, mm. a lot of places they treat it as a delicacy. We eat pig brains. We eat lamb brains. But we used to have like brains a, are different, at right? The farm. We used to this like lamb on lamb brains on toast kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Like you paddle it with like fresh ricotta, like whatever. Oh. So no, Ooh. that goes away. So you get the cheeks, you mm-hmm. get the tongue, um, the lips, the lips, the cud. Yeah. Yeah. You, those are gelatinous as all get out. We know that. Very odd. And that's a 24-hour braise, dude. <laughs> that's going for like, those are... Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> you can hurt somebody with it one of those things. It's just If it's not cooked all the way, it's like uh, a rock. I thought I uncovered you're, a nightmare. You're boiling river rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a while for those structures to break down. And they are gnarly looking. Wow, dude. So then, you know, like, that's a lot of people it. don't like to talk about it, but, you know, the skull and blood and a lot of things that come out of harvesting... Uh, an animal the size, some of the intestines and all that stuff. That all goes into bone meal fertilizer for yeah. um, farming and gardening. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it goes to cat and dog food Yeah, plants. So wow. it gets ground and incinerated. gets kind of like into meal, honestly, God. just a powder. It's a bone powder. So, so that gets folded into like dog food, cat food. So oh. you see those... Beef, <laughs> beef product, beef yeah, byproducts right? on the the box of your cat food. That's wow. kind of what it is. So don't dive into it too much unless you really want to. But yeah, I wonder what they do at our farm. I mean, that sounds like happy. that's what they do at like big commercial farms where they got like ten thousand heads. They're just like we'll have to find out. Stuff. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll like, ask. What do they, how do they utilize see, it? But, um, with our guys, they you know those. That's actually almost probably another avenue of revenue for some farmers is to yeah. have you know their, all of their byproducts go off to a you know, a farm like that or a, a plant like that for cat and dog food or bone meal or whatever. That's probably another avenue for revenue. For yeah, them. you're right. Farmers, farmers aren't always in it for the money. Yeah. It's a tough life. Wow. Yeah. Well, man. Hey, Here you go. Thanks for splitting that up and thanks for doing all the work, cutting it up too. Cause so next year when we do this, who gets, you, I mean, oh, man, is this... I don't know. This could be a this could be a thing. You fantasy, know, fantasy, fantasy yeah. draft. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, we'll we'll bring one in, and then we'll we'll, we'll, oh. we'll shoot it. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that next oh, time. Dear. We'll bring in a special guest for that. Yeah, oh, yeah. A we're gonna need a couple. More, a little bit more work. A couple for special guests talking about four hundred fifty pounds versus yeah. touching it. That's not one that uh, that me day. and you can just that's walk a, in here. That's a longer day. Well, I mean, I. I well, mean, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Come on, bro. Well, man, thanks for, for joining the Meat Dudes. Hey. Uh, we're going to sign it off. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be back a lot, coming back to you with a ton of beef talk. So let us know what you want what you want us to chat about. And we're going to be sharing a lot of different experiences and having some cool guests, too. we got some cool guests lined up already. For sure. That we're stoked about. So thanks, guys. Let's sign it off. I'm Evan. Tyler. Tyler.